a large springtime weather system moves into the northeastern U.S. Dry air elsewhere across the country, but conditions are going downhill once again out west. Today's hot spot, 113 degrees in Central Africa, but we're heading into May and June, so we're going to see those records appearing in North Africa, the Middle East, and of course in the desert southwest. The record cold spot in the populated parts of the world, minus 37 in central Siberia. We also saw minus 33 at Mold Bay this morning in northern Canada. Nothing remotely close to that in the lower 48 this afternoon. These are the forecast highs this afternoon. We can see 80s all the way into southwest Kansas, southeastern Colorado, and 90s appearing in the deserts of Arizona. There's the surface analysis this evening, and sometimes it's not just the fronts that are important. It's also the ridges and troughs. Right here, we have a ridge extending from the Gulf of Mexico on up towards Minnesota. You can see on the east side of that, a northerly component bringing that cold air down from the Great Lakes. And on the other side, deep southerly flow. This is the start of moisture return into the Great Plains. Some of that low cloud making its way into the Rio Grande Valley and the Permian Basin. And out to the west, there's our new Bear Clinic weather system starting to move into northwestern California, Fort Bragg, Arcata, not quite to the Bay Area yet. And this is a slow moving system, the triple point right there around Klamath Falls. And I'll just give you a sneak preview going into tonight. Yeah, just not moving very much making some inroads into the Bay Area, but not quite to Sacramento. Major weather system in the northeastern U.S., warm conveyor belt feeding all the way from the Atlantic into Maine and Quebec and wrapping all the way around. If we look at the water vapor imagery, you can see a pretty pronounced dry slot across the northeast corridor, but convective elements all the way from Maine up into Quebec. The precipitable water in this area is near record levels for April. Looking at precipitable water up there of about one inch, which is definitely very significant for this time of year. There's a look at the standard visible imagery. We have flood warnings and watches across western Maine into north New Hampshire. And as you go north, rainfall warnings across much of eastern Ontario and western Quebec, basically from Montreal all the way to Sault Ste. Marie. Winter weather advisories are back for the Lake Erie snow belt. Far southwestern New York, south of Buffalo and Batavia, under a winter weather advisory tonight could see 4 to 8 inches of snow with winds up to 50 miles an hour. All this brown here, these are wind advisories from Michigan to New York and down the Appalachians. There's a look at that surface chart for the northeastern U.S. 70 degrees along the St. Lawrence River. So quite a bit of tropical air feeding north. Dew points in the 50s all the way into Quebec. Then we go southwest. We get into that cold air advection. Temperatures drop into the 40s with very showery weather due to that cold core convection. Cold temperatures in the mid and upper levels, steep lapse rates supporting shallow convection. Lots of wind problems, winds up to 30 knots through Maine and down into the Blue Ridge Mountains. And we do have wind advisories there as well, all the way into Greenville, Columbia, Augusta, Athens, Asheville under wind advisories. A little bit of that residual convection moving through the Appalachians, but we should see an improving trend going into tomorrow with that dry air filtering southeast. Quiet weather in the southern plains, however, with that increasing southerly flow, dry conditions, gusty winds, that's going to mean a wildfire risk. Areas of concern? Well, we've got a red flag advisory for the Del Rio area. Also from Albuquerque up towards Clayton, Raton, Trinidad, and Springfield under a red flag warning as well. Fair skies in the northern plains. You can pretty much pick out where that ridge is. There's that northwesterly flow through Minnesota into Wisconsin. And then on the other side, 
downslope conditions, warming, and fair weather. The southwestern deserts looking pretty good. Lapse rates look a little bit elevated due to that convection breaking out in the Four Corners area. The real change is coming in from the west. We need to focus on that. There it is, a big Pacific weather system drifting south-southeast off the coast of California. And, of course, our frontal system's right there about to move into northern California. This is a good time to refer back to that surface chart, get our bearings. There's our weather system right there, cold front coming into northern California, and an occlusion offshore. I'll take you to another chart where we can get an even better look at that. The Pacific view. So there it is. Another system which is moving southeast or east-southeast. That'll probably be in our weather picture over the next few days, but back behind it, a lot of ridging starting to show up, and that's going to mark a change as we go into summertime. Those stormy conditions in the Pacific will be replaced by the North Pacific High. Maybe that's the start of it. Kind of early still, but uh, it's definitely going to build in for May and June. So we'll check back in on that chart this summer, and you'll get an even better look at that. Those can be some very strong highs, over 1040 millibars on occasion. Just a handful of weather hazards for today and tomorrow. We do have a moderate atmospheric river moving into northern California this afternoon. We're not expecting much in the way of weather with that until it shifts a little bit further south. Atmospheric river will persist in the Bay Area tonight with that deep southerly flow. Could see about half an inch of rain in the valleys. Snow levels running about 6,000 feet. That will drop tomorrow. The atmospheric river will spread down the San Joaquin Valley for tomorrow. Just scraps for Los Angeles tomorrow night, but the mountains will be impacted. So we have those winter weather advisories there from Yosemite down to Tehachapi Pass, the coastal range near Santa Barbara. Snow accumulations above 5,000 feet could be 6 to 12 inches in the highest elevations. And then on the lee side of the Sierra Nevadas, a high wind watch and wind advisories for tomorrow. Winds will be gusting 50 to 60 miles an hour. And, of course, the northwestern U.S. and the Vancouver area. Do we have any viewers up there? If we do, please comment. I'm curious. I, I do know that we have a few viewers out around Victoria and Vancouver. Not much going on up there right now. You can see a lot of snow cover on the mountains there in British Columbia. Looks like northerly flow in place. Looking at the low clouds. Yeah, that's kind of feeding into the system down there in California. And then we see some southerly flow on top of that, building in in the mid and upper levels. And then heading up into Alaska, blizzard warning for the northeastern Seward Peninsula, winter weather advisory for much of the inland Seward Peninsula. Also winter weather advisories across the Brooks Range and North Slope for today, and that's pretty much about it up there in Alaska. Some snow and rain falling in southeastern Alaska, and then, of course, the main problem areas in Canada, in Quebec, with that deep fetch of tropical air. You can really see it here, that warm conveyor belt bringing that moisture northward and wrapping around that surface low. And there's a look at the chart for the Atlantic this shows a progression of weather systems from west to east. The next weather system due into the British Isles later tonight into tomorrow. Down to the south, ridging, covering much of the Mediterranean and southern Europe. So coming back to the U.S., what's going to happen over the next few days? Let's take a look. Well, the Pacific system making very slow inroads into California, gradually moving into the main part of the Sierras and Southern California for late Saturday, and then beginning its trek across the Great Basin area and southwest early on Sunday. And gradually we will see that cold front in the Great Plains for Monday. Dry line starting to set up from about, well, it looks like about uh, Pratt down to Altus and Abilene early Monday. 
remaining quasi-stationary as that cold front comes out of New Mexico. Then as we get the heating later in the day, storms going up along that dry line. Looks like the cold front itself, not really any convection along it, although this will catch up to the cold front later on Monday into early Tuesday. Of course, a lot of the timing and convective modes will boil down to what's happening in the upper levels. Here's the upper level dynamics, the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. Big old wound up channeled flow across the western U.S. A couple of vortexes, kind of a double lobed thing going on right here for early Sunday. And of course, the area we're watching right there for Monday. You can see those dynamics are pretty slow to come out. By midday on Monday, well, we don't have a midday panel here, but this will be under strong southwesterly flow. Well, maybe not so strong in northern Kansas, only 20 knots there, but 40 down to the south. And, of course, the jet stream level winds will be stronger. However, you know, we don't want that big wall of forcing coming through because that's how we get MCSs, that kind of thing. With this weaker forcing coming out of the Great Plains, that will limit the aerial extent and maybe allow some of the storms that do form to have discrete structures. We're talking about supercells, that kind of thing. So Monday definitely does have potential. You can see by 7 p.m. some of the stronger dynamics starting to emerge. This looks like the left front quadrant right there in western Kansas. The main jet from Guadalupe Pass all the way towards Pratt and Wichita. So this whole area here is an area that we're watching. But as far as what's going to happen exactly, it's a little bit too early to speculate on those details. Tuesday could be another significant severe weather day. Large area of dynamics heading into the Corn Belt. So this could be an area of severe weather. St. Louis, Rockford, the Quad Cities, maybe even up towards Madison. And then, of course, other possibilities down the line towards Little Rock and Texarkana. So we'll just have to see about that. The main jet running like that. So the favorable left front quadrant dynamics right there. And then the area to the south is indeterminate because this is cyclonic flow. So we return to the surface chart, bring it up to Tuesday afternoon. Regeneration of convection from the Ozarks up to the Midwest. You can see the triple point right there in the Corn Belt. So this whole area is a area of concern. And then on down the cold front, yeah, there could be some strong storms along that. Then I think we're getting into some capping problems down there in Texas, either capping or lack of good dynamics. Okay, another Strong weather system making its way into the northwestern U.S. This will have a big impact as we go into later next week. And there it is. Cold air mass driving south all the way into Oklahoma, Kansas, Utah, Nevada. That's a rather deep, voluminous air mass. Plenty of cold air back there. This could, of course, be the GFS bias because we're about 168 hours out. So... Yeah, we'll just have to see on this, but this looks large enough to where there's probably a grain of truth in this. So if I was going to bet on this, I would say, yeah, we're probably going to cool down quite a bit in about a week. There's a look at the mid-tropospheric chart. Split flow, polar front jet branch down there in California and on the East Coast and another branch across Canada. That is a progressive west-to-east flow, and you can see the Hudson Bay vortex is gone. Going into next week, our lows gradually open up, and there they're gone. And then we can see the establishment of this large ridge in western Canada. So temperatures probably coming up there in British Columbia. As that builds in, that's almost a cutoff high up there. So that's a blocking pattern starting to set up, the flow becoming very meridional. In other words, large shifts of air masses north and south. That's typically where we get into some anomalous weather. So things probably will be getting more interesting going into the midweek period. Okay, so that's where we end up. That is a 
prominent omega block on the west coast and that'll probably keep the east coast locked up with this trough and that's something we've seen all spring troughing in the eastern u.s and that's all for this edition of forecast lab monday is going to be a storm day monday is also our supporter video day so if you want to get in on that and see Monday's video, you need to head to our Patreon link right there. And we are either going to go live on Monday or we're going to do it early before convection breaks out. Either way, I'll try to make the video useful to our supporters. Otherwise, we will see everybody back here on Wednesday for the regularly scheduled edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.